One morning, after burning a hot fire on a beach the night before, humans found a fascinating residue of the heated sand now cooled in the morning air. They had discovered glass. Glass is one of the oldest forms of art and dates back about 3,500 years. The discovery of glass blowing was made somewhere around the year 50 BC during the Roman Empire, although no one knows for sure when glass making started. This lends to the mystique and the myths of one of the most beautiful art forms known to man. The ancient art of glass blowing has been passed down throughout the centuries in Europe, from father to son and artisan to artisan. And today in America, Quazelle has kept this art alive. Quazelle's past president and glass artisan, Todd Phillips. The beauty and the mystery of glass. One of the most fascinating materials made by man, because it truly has a life of its own. Hi, my name is Todd Phillips of Quazelle Lighting. This has been a family-owned business for over 75 years, with our very early roots centered around hand-blown glass. You might remember when we produced many types of early American glass back in the 1970s, such as Rust Rose and Colonial Charm, and one of the most famous Quazelle designs, the Abigail Adams. Before I came to Quazelle, I was always fascinated by the art of glass making. I was so intrigued that 35 years ago, I went to the island of Murano, Italy, to see and eventually work with the masters to discover the techniques and the mystique of this very ancient art. Having returned to the States and after graduating art school, I opened Salamander Glass Studio in 1975. The alchemists believed that the salamander could live in fire. And for centuries, this creature has symbolized metamorphosis through fire. Glass was the medium of my art, the pigment and the palette, where I created many glass treasures over the years. But in 1980, I joined our family business, which became a much larger stage for my creativity, not only in glass but also in lighting. And now, with the recent popularity of decorative glass, I once again have the opportunity to return to my passion. Art glass. I'd like to share with you the secrets that I learned back in Murano over 35 years ago. Let me take you into our studios today, so that you can appreciate the wonders of this magical material that transforms itself from solid to liquid, and then back again to a state of absolute beauty. The studio glass movement in the United States started back in the 1960s. And studio shops of today are not much different than those from more than a thousand years ago. Our glass studio, modeled after Todd Phillips' Salamandra Studio, is where we develop and design all of our hand-blown art glass products. We will now demonstrate how some of our original designs are created, from the liquid form to final product. Glass starts as a mixture of sand, soda, and lime. It is shoveled into the furnace and changes from a solid to a liquid by heating it to a temperature of 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The reheating chamber is the central melting area. The glass blower returns to the reheating chamber throughout the process to maintain the constant temperature needed to create the perfect art glass. This is necessary to keep the glass hot and pliable throughout the process, so that the glass maker can form shapes and apply decorations. The tips of the blowpipes are heated so the glass will stick to them when gathered from the furnace. Ground colored glass, or frit, is arranged onto a steel table in preparation for decorating the glass. The process begins by piercing the surface of the molten glass in a slow rotation with the blowpipe, and then carefully extracting it from the furnace. The molten glass is then rolled into a symmetrical shape, so the forced air is centered in the form. After cooling, another gather of molten glass is required to build the mass of glass. Quickly, this gather is rolled over a pile of cobalt blue frit or colored crushed glass to melt the color onto the surface of this molten mass. It's reheated again, and then this process is repeated in order to create a more densely colored surface. To create a scallop design, we now must thread a spiral of contrasting color onto the glass form. This technique, called threading, was used by the Venetians more than a thousand years ago. 
After applying the contrasting color, the glass must be reheated in the reheating chamber and then forced into a star mold, which will create the scalloped design. The master craftsman develops the form by swinging the molten glass around in the air, forcing it into an elongated shape. Alright, blow lightly please.